All right, <laughs> got a beautiful day here. It's gonna be 70 degrees. Today, we get to unbox Ventura 150 water maker. Uses only nine amps at 12 volts DC to make nine, uh, six, roughly six gallons per hour. So let's pop this sucker open. Ordered this from Emerald Harbor Marine over in Elliott Bay Marina. And so far, so good. All right, so we've got, we got lots of tubing here. We got. Everything's nicely packed in foam. Probably pretty hard to damage. Well, shouldn't say nothing. But but I can't do this both with uh, one hand, so I will be right back. I'll take you through some pieces, parts here. Start with the, the, the main event, the Spectra 150R water maker at 12 volts DC. Uh, this sucker will draw only 9 amps because that Clark pump recovers some of the energy that went into creating the 800 PSI. It will uh, put out about 6 to 8 gallons per hour even in cold water, which is good. Because up here in the Pacific Northwest, our average water temperature is about uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit plus minus 5. So it should be good. And the R, when we talk about Ventura 150R, stands for remote. And it comes with this neat little control panel uh, that we're going to mount somewhere. Uh, so basically you can just walk down, push start, and it'll take care of the rest. Push stop, uh, and then push flush. So flush the system with fresh water, and you keep those reverse osmosis membranes functioning for indefinitely. With the R version in this static-proof bag is the, the kind of computer or that control panel that that remote is going to talk to. Then we get to the analog feed water pressure gauge, product flow gauge. It should go, we should be, when this is going well, between six and eight gallons per hour on this little dial here. So excited to see that when we get there. Moving on, we've got the um, pump or draw pump that's going to draw the seawater up through the dedicated seacock. Um, it allows you to also you can manually switch between service and run service. You can basically create your own solutions and, and pull water from various buckets or flush with fresh water as needed. Got a 20 micron filter, 5 micron filter that this can go. Uh, these are all kind of separate units you see, which is super nice because you can start to finagle this thing into very small spaces as needed. They also give you a phenomenal number of spare filters. So once you get this set up, you should be good for quite a while. And obviously the all important TDS meter, TDS total dissolved salts, that allows you to make sure that you're producing good low salt, less than 800 PPM uh, parts per million. There's an accumulator they gave us. They got C strainer, three-way valve, the outline, so this will be your out from uh, your fresh water that I'll have to, might have to buy some more of this. Plenty of tubing for all your tubing needs. Hopefully it should be okay. Now I just have to figure out where I'm going to put all this stuff. Okay, folks, I struggled a lot uh, trying to run that tube uh, with the fish tape and everything underneath here, given the number of tubes, because I got to run one freshwater tube, one saltwater tube, I got to run the product water line, and then do all the electrical, which is going to be in the same spot. And just struggling with that fish tape for a couple hours the other day. I think the best thing is going to be to take this whole floor up and then it'll be very easy to lay everything out.
Oh wow. I can see now exactly where that tube got stuck. Mr. Misunderstood. All right, here's what I was talking about. I ran the fish tape from under the floor by the fresh water, you know, the water panel or, or manifold, if you will, that's by the stairs over there. Under the floor, you could see the clear tube there in the, the bottom right of this corner. Da -da -da. I tied a, a line to it and uh, taped it up. And I was struggling because it was getting stuck. Well, you could see exactly now where it was getting stuck. The fish All right, we've got a through haul here. This is gonna be the saltwater intake and I'm gonna connect uh, to this guy. All right, so I'm running the uh, the brine hose. This is the hose that uh, discharges uh, slightly saltier water than you pulled in. And uh, I made some cuts, as you saw. And what we're gonna do, uh, let's try and put this back together. Team's coming for you. <laughs> that ain't no hockey team in there. <laughs> Now we've got fresh water hose, brine discharge hose, and then the salt water pickup hose. So that's those are the three big ones. All the other lines are now small. This blue half inch Tamarito hose will tee off into here so we'll get the uh, that'll be for fresh water rinse that's going to be under pressure uh, so I'm not going to hook that up till we get everything all together all right we got a bunch of holes drilled I'll show you that now before we vacuum gotta mount this here's where it's going so we got the hole there for the Ethernet data cable hole there for power and uh, water out. Two holes, two holes there for uh, data cable and power cable from that control unit to the pump module. Hole up there for water out and pressure out to this gauge, which is gonna go right here and hole in there for water out. All right. Let's keep, let's get her moving. Product line I've been talking about. Quarter inch OD nylon. But this morning I ran a fish tape line. Should stay on really easy actually. It's not much for this thing to get caught on. Famous last words. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
stuck somewhere. Kicks. What's ultimately going to happen? We're going to run it to here. We're going to run fresh water to here, and I'm going to have a three way valve to decide uh, which, you can control which tank gets filled. Similarly right here there's a manifold to decide which tank you're drawing water from. But I've got the product water from the water maker coming here. And then there'll be two lines out. You can control which tank gets filled. Cool beans. Okay, I'm just gonna leave this here for right now. Wrap up the whole electrical terminal here. So let's do that. Where the water maker is going to go, the floor is not solid, so I'm putting three quarter inch plywood in there. Uh, this little cutouts where all the tubes are going to come up through the floor and some of the wires. And uh, nothing special, just putting a little coat of polyurethane on it just to uh, keep it a little bit of water protection. Completely bare plywood would probably mildew in a millisecond up here in the northwest, especially in a boat. Uh, but yeah, so you'll see it in there shortly. So that uh, when I put the water maker in here, I can just really bolt it in. You can see all the tubing and everything is it comes up nicely in that corner back corner where I've got the cutouts there um, so yeah uh, closet area I uh, got it battened in on the back side and then you can see the cornered pieces there those are actually two separate pieces of plywood vertically they do rest on a horizontal support but now they're screwed in and
We've got the uh, pump module. Here's the uh, intake here. Uh, fresh water for when the fresh water rinse. Charcoal filter to remove any chlorine. And then um, pump out to the, to the Clark pump, which we'll put in after this. This is just a little bit bulky, so I think it might be easier to put in before the Clark pump. Here it goes. Now, we're gonna mount those with number 10 pan screws, three quarter inch, so they shouldn't come out the other side. Let's make sure they fit here. Perfect. We just hooked up the data control to the module and we hooked up the power. I'm just gonna zip tie these and uh, tuck the power so it hangs down underneath and out of the way. And then the uh, data, I'm gonna coil up and zip tie in here so it's all nice and neat. We'll be right back. Last time when their cross piece was here, I have to lift up and in. So note to self, if it's not too, if I have to st service this again, just take the floor out. Look at that. It just lifts right in. Whew. With the feed pump, five micron filter and accumulator installed uh, in the little cabinet, I brought in the Clark pump uh, so I could test fit its location. I, as you can see, I had to put up this little panel here uh, to make sure that I could actually get everything closed. So then I marked the, the holes where I ultimately uh, need to pre-drill. So pilot holes and put in uh, relatively large, uh, almost lag screws to uh, hold the park pump down. As you can see, it was a little bit tricky to get uh, a long enough chuck to access the head of the screw and drive these uh, drive these screws down uh, into the plywood and support underneath. Uh, I ended up reaching for uh, a flexible chuck that's uh, probably on the scale of eight inches long, uh, which made this a little more interesting, but allowed me to uh, actually access the head of the screw with the drill. Um, 
past the height of the Clark pump. So uh, it worked out in the end, but uh, one of those things that always takes a lot longer than, than you would anticipate. I can put the floor back in here. We got the floor back in. The whole water maker setup is inside here. Yeah, we'll give a tour of all that when we're ready to set it up, uh, do the walkthrough. But for right now, I'm just gonna hook up the last few tubes here and then do the electrical and install the control panel in here. And we'll be ready to, uh, to put the garage entirely back together. So, getting started. Already, Teflon wrapped all the fittings here. This is gonna go right here. Cutting these tubes to length and getting them run. This is one of the last steps after I've made all the connections at the pressure gauge end and flow meter end of the product feed line, that little black line. Uh, right now you're watching me struggle trying to run the uh, line from the pressure gauge to uh, a, an outlet on the accumulator pump and one of the things you got to look out for as you're doing this quickly is these little black hoses can kink and crack and then leak. Um, luckily I haven't encountered the leak part but I have noticed the kinking and uh, was able to cut out that part of the hose and what I was working on. Uh, so something to keep in mind. And then I, you know, I'm sitting here getting frustrated thinking, man, if I did this all the time, I'd probably uh, be a lot better at estimating the lengths here and, and whatnot. But, you know, I'm showing you the short version, uh, but we got there. And then, um, and then the fun part, uh, I got to pull out some zip ties and really start to tidy up the tubes here um, uh, with everything installed here in that cabinet. And we're getting close to the end where I'm making the final electrical connections uh, coming up here. And um, yeah, we'll talk through that too. So before I had the floor back in, I had the control module, which you can see kind of in the top left of the screen there, that gray box uh, tucked in in a, a cabinet area where there's really no other storage. Uh, running the power lines uh, under the floor into this um, electrical slash battery compartment here. This battery here is the, the starter battery. The remainder of the, the batteries and the house batteries are all in the center of the boat uh, on the floor. Uh, but there's room in here where I mounted the uh, uh, essentially a, a terminal connection um, that I'm working on now here you can see and then um, ultimately this will be going through uh, to a the, the positive will go to the house battery selector switch side of things you know, during all of this obviously using a shrink a heat shrink uh, around all the electrical to connections so you might see a little bit of flame activity the negative will go to a negative bus bar Recapping at this stage, and thanks for watching so far. Part one here, we've got the major plumbing done with uh, all of the major uh, units installed in that cabinet there. Brine discharge, salt water intake, fresh water rinse, fresh water product line. It's all hooked up. Next week, we're going to wrap up the final electrical connections preview here. And uh, 
and the final uh, product water feed connections to the main tank. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments uh, below. Uh, happy to share my experience on in installing this uh, water maker.